Brazil, Switzerland, the two teams both on three points. Something's got to give. And that's Brazil, happy out, would you say, after the uh, second half anyway. I mean, did that performance, was that the performance of the world ranked number one team over the 90 plus minutes? Yeah, I'd say so. In the first half, they, they huffed and puffed, had a, had a few half chances. Um, but in the second half, um, yeah, it was just electric. They kept going forward. It was a, a wave of, of yellow and blue coming towards the Serbia goal. And, you know, it, when, you, when you chase the game for 60, 65 minutes, you get a bit tired. And when you've got the likes of Martinelli, Rodrigo, Jesus come on, um, it was just too much for Serbia. Well-deserved 2-0 win. Probably could have had one or two more. I don't think Serbia lost anything in defeat, but I think Brazil showed today what a what a deep squad they've got. You know, uh, the and players. Fred and Anthony came on as well. That's right. That's <laughs> right. Yeah, yeah. Fred did well. Anthony, not too sure. But um, when you've got these players coming on, when when the when the opposition gets tired, it's it's such a weapon. And I don't think there's any other team or any other nation in the tournament who's got that depth in in their squad. And I think in the end it made a difference. Are Serbia the second best team in that group? I think they are. They uh, obviously Switzerland had a, had a decent result this morning. Poor game though. Poor game. Um, I think. Well, Serbia probably, yeah, Serbia probably has to beat Switzerland, but I think they will. And there's the man of the moment, Richarlison. We weren't expecting that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean. What we know about football, we're thinking he hasn't done nothing the whole game. Very quiet. We thought maybe pinged Jesus on and take Richarlison off before he scored. And when we saw those tunnel pitchers at halftime, we were actually kind of a little bit surprised he was coming yeah, back. Yeah, he's on. such a poor first half, Tony. And and, and and again, but it just shows people talk back in Brazil about how important Richarlison is to this team. Maybe not to us in the studio at times, but again, he scored the two goals. He's in the right place at the right time for for the first goal and, and the second goal. I think it's probably goal of the tournament. The way he's I don't know if he meant to flick it up, but it's flicked it up and he's done an amazing overhead kick, so it's, uh, it's a great night for him. As Brazil take the plaudits of their wonderful fans, their colourful fans, maybe it is time to have a look at that goal. I mean, uh, <laughs> we, we'll go into further analysis after the break, but let's just see what he did with this goal, the technique to flick it up on one leg, twist, turn, curl <laughs> and... and hammer it into the net. Yeah, Vinicius Jr. Goal. was brilliant as well. I think he had taken off not because he played poorly, I think because they were sort of, you know, putting a bit of cotton wool around him. Um, but he set him up for the, for the goal and it's, 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 as you say, it's probably one of the goals of the tournament so far. And, and Can't think of a better one, can you? Not, not off the top of my head, like, you know, but again, we talk about Vinicius Jr. On, on, on the left side, hugging the touchline and it's a good ball into him. It takes a little bit of a nick off the defender, but that's just phenomenal from, from Richarlison and, and, and probably not seen it at Tottenham that much, I wouldn't have thought, but you know, on a big stage like that, that is just a phenomenal finish. And you can see it takes a nick off the defender here, but he must he pops it up with his left foot and then overhead kick like Samba on the beach, maybe over in, over in Brazil. Wasn't it's it a, just? A brilliant yeah. overhead kick. I mean, that's the sort of goal you'd put to music, wouldn't you? <laughs> <laughs> if we had time, we would have put some music to it, Tony, but the, the guys back there are flat out. <laughs> <laughs> it's been a long day. Yeah. <laughs> what do you think of the technique, Didi? Ah, it's just instinct. It's, it's, it's a technique. It's... A feel, instinct, uh, you know, agility, balance, it's, it's everything. Um, because you've got two or three defenders around you and obviously one of the defenders tried to close him down and the ball is getting deflected as well so he has to adjust his position and again, I'm not too sure but he, he meant to flick it up this way because if he did, he probably would have flicked it up a, a little, not, not that high uh, because he you never know if a defender comes, sticks his head in, it's going to whistle for, for dangerous play. But the way he, he finishes it with a back to goal is just sensational. It really is, isn't it? And uh, as I say, I can't think of a, a better goal so far in the tournament. If, if there's going to be another goal better than that, it'll deserve goal of the oh. tournament. Yeah, definitely. It's a, it's a fantastic goal. And again, we said before the game, people want to see Brazil play. We'll, we'll show some chances after the break and what have you. But second half, they, they, they started bringing some subs on. I mean, Neymar is always a talking point. We talk about Messi and, and, and obviously Ronaldo. But Neymar is a talking point. He was poor tonight. He was taken off, injured as well. So be interesting to see what news comes out of the change room after, you know, what, what the situation, if it's a bad injury or just maybe precaution, but he was poor tonight. Mm. Both feet as well, one to lay it up, another to knock it in. Um, that's going to be a, 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 a nominated for an award, surely. Yeah, I mean, it'll be probably when the World Cup's advertising long after it's gone, that'll be one of the goals of the tournament for sure. <clears throat> special, special bit of talent, really. I know, I know in the studio we were talking off-air thinking he's done nothing or Charles and maybe he'll change it. 
you know, take him off perhaps. But that's why maybe I'm sitting here and not in a, <laughs> not in a dugout somewhere. But, you know, the manager's had a lot of faith in the Charles and at times and all people maybe haven't. And even, mm. in, even in England, of course, he's with Tottenham. And, you know, some, player, some people question £60 million. Pound, but I think when you see that goal back, you, you see why they've maybe spent the money on him and uh, maybe just needs a bit more game time at Tottenham. Maybe we've forgotten as well the fact that he actually got the first goal as well. Do you want to have a look at that for us, Didi? Yeah, and, and uh, you know, criticised Neymar at, at halftime. If Colosé plays, he, he didn't play well today, but he, he plays a big part in, in, in here. He, he lets the ball go through, beats one or two players, leaves the ball for uh, Vinicius Jr. Great save by the keeper, but that's where he's got to be. If you play a centre forward, you've got to poach these goals in the six yard box, that's where you've got to be. And um, yeah, he did well as well because he sees the ball late. It's a bit of balance, the defender is slightly unsighted and he kind of rolls it off his shin, rolls it in. But they all count and what an important goal uh, it was because the longer uh, they, they couldn't break through, I think the harder it would have got. Isn't that what they say, you need to be a fox in the box? Yeah, that's a skill in itself, being mm. in the right place at the right time. Many, many strikers over the years you would, you would have said that about and you know, if he's lying around the edge of the box or something, or if he's trying to peel off to the back post and he doesn't score it. And people say, oh, I could have scored that. You know, people at home watching goes, I could have scored that, he shinned it in. But it's all having that intelligence, being in the right place at the right time. And, and he sniffed out the chance. And as Davey says, it's a, it's a massively important goal to get Brazil's World Cup up and running. Yeah, and the reaction, you know, the, the speed of thought to, to just make Yeah, I just needed ball. a touch on it really at that point. The keeper it didn't made, matter what The keeper did make a great save. He's seen it late and he got a really strong hand on it. Mm. You just need a bit of luck then as a goalkeeper, one of your defenders, to bail you out. But mm. how many times do you see a striker react quicker than a defender and he, and he pops it into the empty net? Mm. He can't get cement a place at Tottenham really, despite the, the 60 million. And you, you'd, you'd wonder now, um, but what would you do with him at, at White Hart Lane, as it used to be called, at the Tottenham Hotspur Stadium? Move Kane? and let him play right there where he is at the number nine, right in the middle of the box? Well, I, I don't think the form for Brazil will have too much of an impact what's going to happen at Spurs. And, you know, another, not a problem, but what I see with him, what his best position is actually, because he plays through the middle here at Everton. I think he came uh, from the left-hand side, uh, coming inside. Um, you know, what's his best position? Where can he, where can he, I mean, the place? He won't play centre for, for, mm. for Spurs because that position is blocked um, unless Kane is, is injured and they've got very good wide players and he just has to, has to show now that what he's done today he can do on a, on a consistent basis because that's what it's all about when you talk about the best players. You know, I think that's why he's, he was also probably flattered a little bit at Everton because if he disappeared two or three times a month, nobody talked about it. You know, he had one good game and everybody said, oh, he should be, he should be playing for a better team or a, or, or a bigger, bigger, bigger club. Um, when you play for Spurs, when you play for Brazil, you're on the spotlight every three days. And that's what he's got to learn. And I think that's what he's got to do. If he wants to uh, cement the place and be remembered as a, you know, as, a, as a very good or top Premier League player, I think he's got to get consistency into his game because so far... I don't think he's got it. It's difficult if you are Harry Kane's in front of you. Obviously, Harry Kane, we know, is a world-class striker and perhaps Richarlison thinks he's a number nine. So it may be surprising that Tottenham maybe spent that money on a similar player unless Kane was leaving the club, which we think maybe he's not going to leave the club now. Maybe he missed the chance last mm. summer to go to Man City, of course. But if he has a great World Cup, which he started unbelievable, on the back of this World Cup alone, you know, would he think, I don't want to go back to... I don't disrespect the Tottenham people at home watching going, what are you saying? But I'm saying if he has a brilliant World Cup, he doesn't want to go back to Tottenham, sit on the bench and be basically a backup striker to Harry Kane. Mm. You know, he's good enough to be a number nine at another club. Let's look at the other Brazil chances because they kind of played their way into this game, didn't they? Yeah, I think that first goal was important, Tony, as well. Then they seemed to relax and, and we see the Brazil we thought we'd see first half, maybe we, w that we didn't see. But again, the pressure comes from Richarlison pressing from a number nine position. And this one's Rafinha, you know, it's a very, very good save. That was the start of the second half. And, and, and then they just seemed to up their game and, and chance after chance seemed to come. And on another night, as Didi said as well, you know, it could have been more. It could have been more goals. They, they, they created lots of things and, and it just seemed to pick up good positions in the pitch, you know, pass it around like we know Brazilians could do. That's Alessand Alessandro from the, from the full-back position. What a brilliant strike that was. You know, very difficult for the goalkeeper, moving all over the place. And again, I think Neymar's maybe could have passed it a bit earlier. V Vinicius Jr., a little bit unlucky, slips there at the, vital, at the vital moment. But, you know, this is Casemiro hitting the crossbar. I think Fred came on and Didi mentioned as well. Played really well. I thought Fred was coming on to sew it up and set it at the back, but I've never seen him so far advanced in a football pitch. He was he was playing more as a ten or even as an eight or whatever, and he was getting getting shots off. And again, another shot from Fred there. They they just looked 
I don't know, they looked like the Brazil we thought we'd see the whole of the game, really, but they really upped the second half. And remember, it is only the, uh, the, the first game of the tournament. They expect to be involved deep, deep into this tournament. Um, Serbia probably have that expectation as well. Um, your thoughts on, on, on them overall, Didi? I don't think they lost anything in defeat. Brazil was relentless. The way they played in the second half and the, with the changes they had, uh, there was not an awful lot they could do. Um, but here we see one or two situations where you thought, you know, if they get a good delivery in, this is probably the, the best one they've got. Pavlic, uh, back post, doesn't really know much, nothing about it. Milinko is savage, puts it back in the mixer. Um, and that's one thing I think Ray said it in, in commentary. We may not give Brazil enough credit because if you want to win a World Cup, you've got to be able to defend. Mm -hmm. And I think that's one part of their team where they don't get enough credit because they've got defenders in Marquinhos and in Thiago Silva. Obviously, he's getting on a bit. Alexandro uh, did ever so well. Danilo as well. He was still bombing forward. Got a brilliant keeper. Defensively, I think they're probably as good as anyone. And then with the attacking talent they've got. I think that'll be a tough nut to crack. I think there was a time we never gave Brazil any credit for defending. They mm -hmm. used to be the, you know, the, the 70s team, the 80s mm -hmm. team, uh, but they've really come on in terms of defending. Well, that was always the weak, well, not always the weakness. They're always a brilliant team, but mm -hmm. if there's ever a question mark over Brazil, it was always the defence and sometimes the goalkeeper as well. And we spoke about Alisson before the game. He's, he's a phenomenal best, probably one of the best in the world, if not the best in the world. And as, as Didi rightly says, the back four again were, were, were superb today and very comfortable on the ball as well. You know, can keep the ball as well. But they will get bigger tests. I think Serbia puffed and puffed, but no other clear chances. OK, time deal and Serbia to come. Switzerland have made a habit of getting out of their groups and, and you know, going into quarterfinals at least. I mean, you know, they could be someone we need to be reckoning with as well. And what's going to be a difficult group? Yeah, I mean, it's smart Switzerland. They always seem to qualify and really seems for all the tournaments. They always seem to get the job done. And even today, you know, Shakiri with a brilliant cross there for, for Mbola for an easy tap in, really. Um, and not and not celebrating against the, the country he was born in, you know, which is a bit of a strange one. But, um, yeah, Switzerland are not a bad team. They, they, they're really no superstars, but all work well together. Back to the Brazil game and Brazil's chances. As I say, they're ranked number one in the world. Uh, and with that second half display and those two <laughs> really good goals, um, would you put them up there now, like... France started reasonably well after going a goal down. England obviously had a super start. Spain, probably the most impressive so far. Yeah, what I liked about them is that they, they were still going forward after they scored the second goal because, you, you know, Serbia was never going to come back because they had a very tough game. And I'm sure the lads will sleep tonight, um, <laughs> the Serbian lads, because they had a really tough game, had a lot, a lot of work to do. Um, they're just relentless. And uh, I know Spain scored seven, and but... They probably had, out of the teams who impressed the most, they probably had the best opponent tonight, Brazil. And, you know, the question will be what happens with Neymar? He's carried an injury. Can he play next game? Are they maybe a better side without him? Because the team... Well, you that, made your feelings pretty clear about him earlier. Yeah, but, but, but this, if he keeps losing the ball, you know, I don't think I'm, I'm alone with the, with the opinion that he's, you know, he's got to do better, he's, he's got to do more. But I think the team that's finished the game was probably a better 11 than the one that started the game. And that's so, a big sorry, question. It's a conversation to be had, isn't it? Because we say Portugal, they can't start a team without Ronaldo. Just going to say Argentina, that, yeah. they can't start a team without Messi. And is that the same for, for, for Brazil? Because you did say earlier, Didi, that um, they, uh, Ronaldo, uh, you, you, you brought him to the tournament, you've got to start him. Neymar, you brought him to the tournament, you drop him. <laughs> Well, it's a tough question. I understand it's a tough question. And Titi probably, maybe the decision is, is taken of him uh, if he can't play or start the next game. But, um, you know, if he doesn't do better, when, you know, if you look at the players on the bench, because I don't think four years ago or eight years ago, I don't think they had the, the, the depth in, in, in their squad than, than they have now. And now you've got, you know, Martinelli, what he's done for Arsenal this season, Jesus, what he's done for Arsenal. Um, you know, Anthony costs 90 million. I'm not his biggest fan, but obviously he's got something. Um, so, uh, Rodrigo coming on, you know, he was mm -hmm. brilliant uh, the half hour he played. So, you've got players who, who've proven they can play at the biggest stage and, and perform on the biggest stage. And if you've got a player then who doesn't perform, who's maybe thinking about himself more, it's a, I know it's a huge question. It'll be a, an endless debate in, in Brazil if he, if he were to be dropped. But I wouldn't think after seeing what happened tonight, I don't think it's out of the equation. Is um, Brazil, on tonight's form, going to win the World Cup? Hmm. 
I said before they were my favourites and they were my pick to win it. After probably was it 60 minutes, I was questioning my my decision, but I think Richarlison scored in the 62nd minute. So, but after that, it seemed it seemed there was a freedom after that. We have to not forget the pressure on these players as well. The Brazil, you know, population they expect probably they won the World Cup, you know. So it wasn't clicking for that first hour, but we could see with the chances we showed, the goals they scored, they all just seemed to. There was that release of pressure, and they all just we, we know how they can play after that chance after chance. You know, hit the woodwork a couple of times, two goals. Of course, could have been more, Tony. So. I'm going to stick with them. <laughs> they won it 20 years ago. You yeah. were there. And uh, maybe they'll win it again. Well, thanks very much indeed for your company. That's all we have time for this evening. Thanks to you for joining us. And thanks also to Shea and Didi for their company on the couch on a night when the boys from Brazil showed they are a force to be reckoned with and they could well be adding that sixth star at the end of the tournament. From all of us here, you are.